Hey, you guys, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit. I've shot a bunch of video when I was doing my engine uh, analysis, I guess. And um, it was clear that the pistons and the valves at the end of the day did not hit each other, even though when I was using the borescope to, you know, like a little tiny camera to look in the combustion chamber, I was seeing little shiny spots. So here's my setup here. Um, I had a portable air tank, a little 10 gallon tank, and I was using it for my leak down test and other things, but I also had a bore scope that uh, let me just show you. So this is peering into the combustion chamber and you can see my 12 to one pistons with these very large valve reliefs and these little shiny spots. Occasionally, let me just go to the next photo. You see them occasionally and I thought, oh, well, that might be where there's momentary contact. But um, anyway, when I did the leak down tests, sorry, go back to this. When I did the leak down tests, I was getting really good results and compression tests are getting great results. So I called up Josh Arnold, my engine builder, and he said, listen, if you actually had your pistons and valves hit each other, you would have terrible leak down results. You wouldn't have four to six PSI, you'd have, you know, 80 PSI, you just and your compression test would be 30, not 180 to 210. So, no, you're fine. Um, so anyway, you can see that the, the combustion chambers. Um, there's a squinch area here where it's polished, and what Josh is pointing out is that that happens in these areas here, and you're getting a little bit of a reflection from the light as well. So the, these light areas here, it's just because it's a, it's a squinch area. The valves are very, very close to the pistons and they tend to clean themselves off as a result. Um, so the cam, uh, the, uh, the key slot, the key slot of these cams, you know, cams is uh, cams is angled. And I just, let's see, if, where is it? Ah, going the wrong way here. Come on, there it is. So here's the new Kent. Cam. Here's the tectonics, the back side of the tectonics cam and the front side of the cam cams. This is a really beefy unit, very thick, really nice. But talking to Fred at Tech 53, where he has supplied me with my braking system and some other parts, and he's a material engineer uh, in the aerospace industry, and he just said, listen, I've, I've lost motors because these aluminum cam sprockets um, eventually you know, the, the material fatigues. And so over on this one here, you can see there's a little metal post that's pushed through from the back side that's supposed to hold it in the keyway. Well, the, the steel is not gonna give out, but the aluminum will eventually uh, open up and, and this key will become loose and this can actually tear off. I was getting these bolts backing off here, because um, this, this is the back side you're looking at. But basically, you'll have the same thing with the Kent, no matter how thick this stuff is, this keyway here will be supported by a tiny little key that will eventually compress and distort the metal here and cause this thing to fatigue. And again, the bolt surface and the washer surface that uh, holds all this together um, is, is pressed onto aluminum and aluminum itself. Remember, aluminum as a material is not very good in compressive strength. So um, you're just ultimately looking for trouble. And I'm not going to rev the piss out of this thing in the future. I think I'm going to set the rev limiter at 7,600 rather than over 8,000. And I'm going to run the modified OEM one. So Tech 53, they've got one of the ones where they cut them and they put them back together with the plate, with the Allen heads, and everything is, is steel. It's heavier, but it's going to not let go and cause trouble. So anyway, I thought I would show you that and then you can watch the videos of me doing the testing and remember during the videos I think I've actually had some piston valve clearance when I saw that shiny spot but at the end of the day the answer is no I didn't so all is well I'll put the engine back together um, starting next um, Friday Saturday then next fall not this weekend coming up with the next one when I'm back on the island well I'm doing a leak down test and uh, I'll just show you. Um, so I've got cylinder number one kind of set where the lobes are.
closed and I'll just turn on the air supply and you can look at where my uh, gauges are. So I have fairly good ceiling I guess. The next one in line here is going to be number three because it's just closest to being set up. So here we are. So again, not crazy bad numbers. There comes number four. Okay, let's see if we can do this last one. Number two. One, two, three, go. Oops, something weird happened there. Again, I think the engine just rotated when I did that. So I just did cylinder number one compression and it's uh, 195. I'm inside the car, I got the kill switch on. I don't know if you can see out there, but there's the gauge. And uh, maybe it's easier to see underneath. Okay, we'll give it a whirl. One, two, three, go. That's higher, actually. That, uh, that got to 200 and a bit. Let's see. Got to 210. So, a little bit of variability between those two cylinders. Here we go, cylinder number three. of the three so far. So that turned out to be 180. So we're number four, here we go. I'm varying between 180 and 210, so some of these are not doing as well as others, so 